Hey, what's happening everyone? My name is Ryan and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Today, we're going behind the scenes. Today we're going behind the scenes of our latest documentary film, Ago. Ago is about Nathan Morelli and his shop, his tattoo and piercing shop. I wanna get into why I picked his particular story in just a minute, but just to let you know that this video is gonna be a little bit longer than most of our videos, just because there's a lot to cover and there is a lot of behind the scenes footage that we haven't shown anywhere else. So there's a lot to cover here. Also just wanted to give you a bit of a spoiler warning and if you wanted to check out the documentary first, I would recommend going and checking that out first and then coming back here and watching the behind the scenes. It's a really great film and we worked really hard on it. So go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, let's get started. First, let's get into pre-production. In any film that we produce here, whether a narrative film, a TV commercial, or a documentary, we always start in one place. And that one place is Milano. Now this is not a sponsor at all. And I've said this many times on our channel before, not a sponsor, but we absolutely love Milano. And we've used it for every single film that we've produced here in the last few years. I'm not gonna dive deep into Milano. I have plenty of other videos that kind of explain what we use this for, but basically we use it for every single film in terms of pre-production and also sometimes in post-production. Here we jot down any ideas, mood boards, storyboards, or even draft scripts. It's an incredibly powerful tool for organizing your thoughts and your vision on any given film. If we were to open up our Milano, here's what it looks like. For Ago, you would see that it all starts out with the about the film and a brief description of what it's gonna be about, our key contacts here, and even a to-do list. Um, that usually is a lot longer <laughs> these days. I have some inspiration, so ideas for the film and our mood board for the way we want this to feel and to look. A lot of tattooing stuff in here because there wasn't a whole lot of piercing inspiration. And that was actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do this film in the first place, but we'll get into that in just a second. I also have some other films here, different tattoo studios and things like that, just for inspiration on that side of things. And then over here we have our storyboard, um, which we'll dive into in just a second. And then a uh, pre-production meeting. This was with uh, Nathan, just asking questions to help us better visualize where the story was gonna go. We just asked him a bunch of questions about his business, how he got started, where he is now, what his goals are, some of the hardships and hurdles that he had to face, just anything and everything that can help us navigate this story in the way that we envisioned it going. We also wanted to stay true to Nathan and his story, so asking these questions ahead of time in our pre-production meeting uh, was really crucial, really essential for making this film. Plus, we really get to know Nathan and his crew and really just become friends before we go in to that vulnerable moment where we have the camera facing him and we're asking questions there's lights everywhere what are you saying nobody wanted to to remodel down here and then that cool woods backdrop i was saying it's all all woods for days down here it's so rad build a relationship beforehand so by the time we start asking him questions on camera it's more like a friendly conversation than it is, you know, a job, a, a project. After that, we picked our shoot days and it looks like we did this in February. The film didn't actually come out until September, so that's how long it took. <laughs> I guess in documentary time, that's pretty quick. But anyway, here is the storyboard. And as you can see, I wrote the script to the storyboard. So it's not really a script. These are just things that I thought Nathan might say. And it really was just a reference for us to know where the story was going, know where the vision was going, and to visually show Nathan what was going on in my head as I was kind of writing this whole thing out from the beginning. For us, the main idea was to focus on the story itself, Nathan's story from beginning to now, and less about his shop. We wanted to show the man who worked really hard and poured out blood, sweat, and tears to get a dream to its goals and really just focus on Nathan and his family and all the sacrifices he made. So Nathan's story was really interesting to me because he came from absolutely nothing and not only a dream of building a shop for himself, but also one that kind of changes the whole mentality of what we think it's like to walk into a tattoo shop. There's a certain mentality that we all think about when we're getting our first tattoo and they're just not like that at all. He really built a team that loves people, that's there to serve people, but not just that, to educate people, to give them the best experience. So I really wanted to capture that on film, but also talk about some of the struggles and the hurdles that Nathan had gone through. You know, it was, it, it all started somewhere and I, I don't want to give too much away. Please go 
go and watch the film if you haven't already. But if you have watched it, you totally know what I mean. Nathan is a really good dude, and the people that he's chosen to work with are also amazing people. So anyway, now I spent hours on this particular film, and this is just because I wanted this documentary in particular to feel a lot bigger than I thought I had the ability to accomplish at the time. That meaning, you know, I was watching a lot of Netflix documentaries at the time and uh, Chef's Table was one of them. And I really liked that narrative cinematic style that really focused on the chef's life and less about their restaurant. So I wanted to recreate my own version of that and not necessarily copy anything that they were doing, but just this narrative style of documentary filmmaking. So I decided to write this whole thing down and the things that I thought he would say. And what's funny is, after I had written that intro, I showed it to Nathan just as a placeholder, something that he can reference when reading through the storyboard. And he actually ended up liking it. He told me that this was something that he thought he would actually say. So we decided to use it in the film when we had him voice over that whole intro. Life can be unexpectedly rewarding. Okay. Cool. While at the same time, not so forgiving. The seasons will change. But the patterns remain the same. You will have your victories. And you will have your failures. Pretty cool and it just goes to show you that you just you never know what can come out of the work so just jot down your ideas don't be afraid to try something new uh, or try something you're passionate about because you never know what will actually end up in the film i i should say that i really had to get to know nathan before i can pitch him something like that it was really cool to be able to have that relationship with him because it really elevated the film in my opinion okay so now let's talk about gear just to make sure that we were very well organized we put a list together of all the gear that we wanted to use now because as we're peering into someone else's life and we're trying to be quick, we wanted to travel light and we're very selective with the gear that we brought because we didn't want to be carrying around too much. There were two different tiers for this. There were when we were doing the interviews on those days, we brought a lot more gear with us. And when we were out and about kind of running gun, we didn't want to miss a moment. So we decided to pack light and travel light. So we decided to go with the Sony FX3. We shot everything in S-Log, 422 10-bit, S-Gamma 3 Cine. These are just the settings that we landed on but if you'd like a more in-depth breakdown on our camera settings for this film, let us know in the comments down below and we'll make a video for that. We mainly used our Sony 35 millimeter 1.8 and this was on purpose for a few reasons. Number one, it was super light. And when you're carrying around a camera for, you know, eight hours a day, you want your camera set up to be as light as possible. If I were to get some funding for a short film that I'm producing or hired on for a bigger production, then that's when I would go to a rental company and rent some cine lenses. I have plenty of other lenses around the studio that I could have used. However, this 35 millimeter really did the trick. It was super light. And I just really liked the image quality that I got personally at the time. For our camera rigs that we used for the Sony FX3, we used the small rig half cage with a wood handle. And we also used the top handle that the FX3 came with for our audio. On it, I had either the Sennheiser MKE 600, and I plugged that straight into the Sony handle that comes with the FX3 through XLR to try and get the best possible quality audio I could from Nathan and his crew as we're following them around the shop. At the time, I didn't have any lapel mics, and right now I have the DJI mics. These are awesome. However, I didn't have these at the time, so I used my shotgun mic. Sometimes I would use the Rode VideoMic Pro because I was able to get a decent quality out of that for this film and wasn't as in the way as when I had the Sennheiser on. You know, I'm trying to get in and get decent shots and I'm kind of in the way with this long microphone on this tiny camera setup. It was it was hilarious. <laughs> so on that, I had external batteries and for these I used the FX Lion Nano 1. I put that on a V-mount and connected that to the cage. Beyond that is just the Sony handle and also an ND filter, a variable ND filter. Now, normally I'd put on a matte box, but for this kind of run and gun style, for me personally, I like using variable NDs and I like this one here 
Um, I think it goes for about 80 bucks. And this one doubles as a polarizer as well. So you have a two in one kind of deal. Oh, and we also use the free world 4K monitor. I use these on all of my camera rigs because you know, I used to use the smaller ones, but I have really bad eyes, so hey, I need a bigger screen. I don't mind it, it has false colors, it has a histogram on it. It's a really great monitor and a super affordable one as well. So all in all, here's a visual of what that camera rig looks like when it's all put together with the Sennheiser and the 35 millimeter and this big old monitor, but it worked for me. And you know what? I would just say, use what you have and make your film. For audio, we use the Tascam DR40X. I love this little field recorder. It has great preamps in it and I'm actually using it right now. I have our Sennheiser right above me and right beside me is the Tascam. And here's the same audio setup that I used for our documentary film. For lighting, we only used natural lighting when it came to the run and gun stuff. I would either film next to a big window or I would be filming outside. Most of the places had really great lighting in them already, so I just kind of utilized that because we were moving around so fast and didn't have a whole lot of time for setting up lights. Um, there were a few exceptions, like when we were with Miles and he was tattooing. There are a few shots that I wanted to get with controlled lighting, so we had one light above him, I believe the Godox VL150. But for our interview, we did use our lighting and I think we only used two actually. We used our Godox VL150 for our key light and we also used our Aperture 120D as a bit of a hair light or a backlight. And then beyond that, they had tons of lights all over the shop that looked cool and that actually brought some, you know, a bit of hair light in some cases. For example, the Ago sign behind Nathan here or even the jewelry cases that he has beside him, those all lit him up fairly well and it was pretty cool to have those in the shot anyway. I wish I would have exposed for those a little bit better, but when you're working on the fly, sometimes you miss things, but you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> okay, so let's get into the production side of things, our shoot days, where our thought process was on everything. So first let's talk about the crew. I have Tiffany, our projects manager. We also had Oliver Yardley. He filmed all of our BTS, all of our B camera shots. We also have Taylor Holbrook who helped with the script, helped with the visual storyboard, helped with all the visuals in general. She helped us on set. And then we also had John Perez. He stepped on as a visual consultant. My wife who also is a visual consultant here. We also had Nathan and his crew. These were all just amazing, wonderful people and super fun to work with too. One of the coolest parts about this job and what we do is people. And that's one of our core values is people first. So anytime we do any kind of project, we're always trying to make people feel comfortable. And with Nathan and his family and his crew, that was the number one thing. And when it comes to run and gun, there's gonna be a few hiccups here and there. And one of them was the fact that we didn't pack our gimbal down because we didn't really think we'd use it. We didn't want to take the time to set it up and, and balance it out. So what I did for the driving scene, I've hopped in the back of Taylor's car and I held the FX3 and I used my arms as gimbals and really relied on the internal stabilization that this thing has, which is incredible by the way. I got bonked on the head quite a few times with, with Taylor's hatch just coming down, hit me in the head. Sorry. But we got a really great shot and it was awesome. For the most part, the whole entire production was super smooth. It took three and a half days to film all together. We took an extra day to ask Nathan a couple more questions in another interview. We wanted to respect Nathan's time in his shop and with his clients and to just get him back to work, you know, so we didn't want to take up too much of his time. So we decided on this, you know, four day, three or four day uh, structure. We got anything and everything that we could imagine and we didn't want to miss a moment. So we were there like flies on a wall. They did a really great job and uh, it, was, it was just super fun to work with them. I can't say that enough. There were a lot of shots that were very uncomfortable when you're documentary filmmaking. It's uncomfortable most of the time or you're in some kind of weird situation. And in this case, I was documenting this guy getting his tattoo and I had to really get up close and personal. Luckily, this guy was really cool and he was uh, you know, stoked to be a part of it. So I was able to get in there and get some real nice close-ups in slow motion of the needle crossing his arm. And that was really cool. So thank you very much for that as well. Production was fun. It went really well, really smooth and I couldn't have asked for a better crew, better group of people to work with, and a smoother film production. It was just awesome. So this is just an overall view of the behind the scenes in this film. There's so much more that happened and so much more I can talk about. So if you'd like for us to go in depth about any part of the process, let us know in the comments down below. I hope that this film will reach many people all over the world and 
I hope that you too enjoy it as well. Well, that's gonna do it for me, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me in this behind the scenes look. If you're feeling inspired or you like this video or you learned something, please click the like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Laters.